Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel once again. Josie and myself have just got all of the ulams in and today we are giving them all a break dose wormer. We'll explain a bit more about that as we get into the video, but we've got these to do and we've got the fat lambs to do and the top lambs to do. So Josie, come here. We don't need you to ignore her. Enjoy the video guys and don't forget, like, subscribe. <laughs> Tracy, come on, up, come on, here. Come on, up, up you get, up you get. Good girl. She's like having a child. Right, you lambs, what we're doing today, guys, we are Zolvixin. If you get a worm, this is the one that'll break the bank. So you don't actually use a lot of this. This is a group four wormer. And we just use this once a year as what we call a break dose. So what this does, because there's absolutely no resistance, well, I bet there probably is a little bit of resistance in some flocks now, it kills all the worms inside the lambs. So any resistance they had to the other wormers we use, we're getting rid of those resistant worms. So when we come to use those other wormers again, they're not resistant to them. So what we do, we'll get these in and I'll show you how it works. Careful of this because it is about 200 pound a bottle now. That is one litre, 200 pound a bottle. And these lambs today, they're gonna have about five mil. One mil per 10 kilos. These are all the ewe lambs that we've kept for breathing. So there's 67 of them, 55 A flock, 12 of those Russo and crosses. And then we're also gonna be doing the 23 that I have for sale, which are the ones that haven't been shown. Every one mil of this is 20 pence so each sheep we're going to do today is going to cost a pound for a dose but the reason we do this as i said before is to stop resistance in the flock because over time resistance is building up to those other wormers in the world and we just want to make sure that we're not having that in the flock at home we don't want to be using this all the time because if you use this all the time resistance will build in this and we end up with the same problem and we'll have to find another wormer and they're very expensive to design. And then the other thing we're going to be doing today is we're just going to be giving them a mineral drench. So we got the Overboost from Osmonds, great product. They're going to get about 10 mil of this each day just to make sure they've got the mineral balance they need in the body. Spot the board Lester. She's just in here while the rest of them are being tucked then she'll go back in with them, but she needs a dose as well. They're looking really well, these ewe lambs, really, really happy. It's one of those things, once they've been shorn, you're hoping they look good with their jackets off. The ones that have their jackets still on are the ones for sale. The reason we do that is because some people don't like them shorn, so I give them the option then. You can share them once you get home, but I know some people don't like them in shorn, we do. That is why some in here still have the jackets on. Go on, go on, go on, go on girls. Good girls, good girls. These are at the farm down the road that we rent some land off. So fortunately we have this handling system, which I'm really lucky to have. So not having to set the wrapper up today, it's one of them. Get them in, drench them, get them back out. So once these are drenched, they're gonna go back into the field they were in for 48 hours. And then they're gonna get moved on to some fresh pasture. Try and do some good practice. So get them up, get them up. Good girls, good girls. One handy thing is when they are shorn, you fit more in races, in trailers, which makes life a little bit more easier. They don't have the wool to hold on to if they get out and you try to catch them, but yeah. You can just see on a couple of them, they are just starting to scour a bit. You can see there that muckiness. You can't see it as much on the shorn one. That's kind of the reason we do it, but it's a good example. Can't see one. The ball of the Lester we've already dagged out. Um, leaving the wool on her because I'm not brave enough to shear her. They're really well though. Look, feeling really fit, really happy with the condition they're in. Just off grass. I know the fat lambs get a bit of corn, but these are just off grass and it shows coming on really well. Just like mini shearlings. For anyone after these lambs, they are still for sale, these 23. And they do anyone a good job. We just don't need them this year. We've got a bit more surplus. There we 
we are. Now the important one. So she's been done. So for the Lester, you've had your dose. Go here. Go along. And this is what we'd call an orange wormer today. So this is, as I said before, the most recently developed wormer. There is also a purple one that's come out, but that isn't readily available. Calm, calm, calm. Good girls. Oh yeah, yeah. Calm girls, calm girls. Calm. And we want to make sure they're having the whole dose of this. We don't want them spitting it out. Another thing I always say with these, keep the bottles, because these Zolvix bottles are amazing. Get an extra one every year because you can use them the wrong way up so you don't get spilt all down your back. As we all know, with sheep, cattle, we've all had it happen to us. And like that, that is them um, all done. These will now go back out to the same field like I said before because you want them to excrete all those worms out onto the field and hopefully they don't carry any with them. So yeah, get these back to the field. Very impressed this group of ulams. So if you remember we had the problem with the worm burden earlier in the year. So this group actually didn't need worming. If you remember the top plums we had a problem with being squitty, whereas these we didn't. So this is actually the first time they've been wormed in about 12 weeks. So in their lives, this group have actually only been wormed three times since February. So for some people, that's not a lot. Others, that is quite a lot, but we've worked our faecal egg counts apart from this one because it's a break worm. And as they grow into shearling ewes, they won't actually get wormed again. They'll probably get wormed once more in their life, but we do not worm any of the ewes here on the farm. Well, if by magic, we are now down at the fat lambs. So what we're doing here, we need to pull out any that are at weight because we don't want to worm and drench them. They're going to go into the trailer. Then any of the others, as we did with that last group, we're going to give them a break dose. If I'm honest, this group probably has a bigger problem with the worms than any of the others. <laughs> So that is all the fat lambs now sorted. We have picked nine out that are gonna go this week. So these are gonna to go to the local butcher. And then we have three of those back for boxes that we sell here on the farm. We put four chow in the field. The handy thing about Zolvix, it's only got a seven day withdrawal. So in another week, these could actually go away fat. And there was probably half a dozen of them you saw I dagged out that needed it badly. So they've just started to probably go a little bit squitty due to the worm burden. So hopefully we've caught it early enough and it shouldn't affect them too much but now the last 40, 40 in there are a little bit small so probably need another couple of weeks until we'll take another draw out. Go on. One's laying there, we'll just sort him out too while we're doing this.
Oh mate. Last couple of days we have just had a little bit of wet weather come in and we just had a couple of days of scald, so just gotta watch that, but so after a sheep, wet weather, scald. Come on boys. <whistles> right so that is them back in the field now and all of the lambs wormed and overboosted. So hopefully that should give them a little bit of a pickup. Obviously the nutrients should give them a pick up too, so give it a couple of weeks, they should look like a different group of lambs, although they do look fairly good at the moment, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video, um, something a bit different, looking at break doses of wormers, and going forward to these kind of things are gonna get more and more important as we don't wanna build up resistance. So as other wormers or the whole sheep sector could be in a little bit of a disaster. So just one of those things we do, to try and help us out, sell us out going to the future, as well as obviously feast leg counts and other things such as that. Really hope you enjoyed, guys. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed. Yeah.